Okay. I, I suggest, excuse me, I suggest to move to the uh, fourth speaker, Igor Jorgen. So, so we will move to a more regional approach after the uh, approach by, uh, uh, by energy. Uh, and uh, uh, we, uh, you, Igor will uh, focus on uh, sustainable uh, development in Russia and the Russian Economic Union. She is the chairman of management board of the Institute of Contemporary Development and vice president of the Russian Union of Industrialists and Entrepreneurs. So you have the floor. I give you 10 minutes. Thank you very um, much. Thank you. Plus. Thank you very much. To be a good Russian, I will curtail my speech because there are <laughs> so many people behind me. So let me just show you what I wanted to tell you and then a little bit to comment on the situation in, in Russian energy sector. So Russian Federation started a real uh, integration into the ESG world. There is a carbon regulation, there is a sustainable fin finance regulation, there is regulation of ESG ri risks by the central bank, and the, we create a methodical a framework for talking in all of those ESG factors into the development uh, of uh, industry in Russian Federation, not only industry and financial markets too. But we're not alone. We want to build it on the e Eurasian space. Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan are part of, of, those, uh, of this uh, union. Kazakhstan is m very much in, in uh, advanced. They started in 2013, so they already have a carbon exchange. They have a pretty advanced financial market with green bonds and stuff like that. They have taxonomy approved. They have mandatory disclosure of non-financial uh, uh, information for all organizations, which we, we, we don't have it in Russia. It's, on, it's only voluntary and it's only a fraction. Kyrgyzstan is a little bit behind, but they are beginning very serious development. Uh, in Bishkek, they uh, now have uh, uh, the draft national taxonomy and now they approve the guidelines and they copy Kazakhstan because this is the closest neighbor and uh, definitely uh, there is serious progress there. Belarus talks a lot, but is not very much on, on, uh, on time schedule, uh, but they're developing different subject, uh, objects uh, of this sustainable development, and they have a state concept of the green bonds of Republic, for example, verification system, and so on and so forth. Uh, Armenians a little bit behind, but they also have uh, el an elements of uh, uh, stock exchange with green bonds and national road map for stable finance. Uh, and I, I, I want to uh, just to uh, on uh, at this part of my presentation, I want to say that no matter what we do, uh, Chinese uh, Reg regulatory system and Chinese uh, stock exchange, Chinese financial instruments and standard setting are well ahead of us. They work uh, for, a, for, for at least 15 years on that stuff. And if uh, we know that International Sustainability Standard Board, in, with, which is headquartered in Montreal, uh, decided to uh, take Asia on board, they delegated to to Chinese People's Republic because they are so advanced in methodology, regulation, financial motivation of those who want to be green, uh, that it's a fait accompli. Another meta is that, of course, an Eurasian space will be, by and large, I'm absolutely sure, they say that they will be independent, they will be autonomous and so on, but they will copy Chinese uh, example of how to uh, transfer their economies and financial markets to ESG uh, uh, transformation and sustainable development. Uh, of course, you know that they promised to be uh, to get the peak out of the energy mix by 2030, and then start drastic uh, 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 to curtail drastically the, the emissions and all of that stuff. And at the moment, as, as we all uh, know, uh, on electrical mo uh, cars, uh, automobiles, on, on uh, uh, turbines for the uh, windmills, on, on all of this, they're well ahead of us. 
they're well ahead of Europe, and, but, uh, and they're number one in the world. And nevertheless, as, as was shown, coal production is grown and will be growing until 2030, but that's now in the Constitution of uh, People's Republic of China and in, in their documents of the 25th Congress. Uh, judging by what, how, discip how, how disciplined is the process is, they, they'll probably manage uh, zero by 2060. Uh, a couple of words on, on, on Russia. You're absolutely right. When the war started and you cut uh, Russia out of, uh, of your supplies, uh, the pivot to Asia was declared. And uh, at the beginning, discounts were 40%, both in India and in China. And in India, we couldn't uh, uh, convert this money. <laughs> There are still 14 billion uh, worth of uh, in, in rupees, and, and we don't know exactly the scheme on, on, on how to, to recuperate that and transfer it to, to real capital or real money. Uh, same in China. In China, yuan, of course, is, uh, we have the, the, the trade in yuan, so it's, it's easier. Uh, but at the moment, I would say that uh, according to the, our Ministry of uh, uh, Energy, the discounts go to 10%, and the volumes are considerable. Uh, definitely, uh, all kind of further sanctions, secondary sanctions, and, and so on and so forth, are uh, in force. It's difficult to, uh, to transport uh, oil and gas to, to, to the countries, which, to the friendly countries, put it this way. Lloyds, for example, uh, forbids uh, uh, insurance. But there are always gray, gray skins. And uh, Russians insure it in the international waters. The last mine is taken by Turks, by Egyptians, even, l l let us be honest, by Greeks and, 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 and people from, from, your, from your jurisprudence. So from this point of view, if someone thinks that Russia suffered a lot, yes, at the beginning it was a serious blow. At the, at the moment, we, we don't feel it. Uh, inflation is at 6% and the GDP growth is at 2.8, almost 3%. So when we compare the, the, the economic situation, economic warfare didn't work the way it was planned. That's, that's a fact of life. But that's short term. Uh, long term, uh, mid term and long term would be much more difficult because technological gap will not be covered. And then we will be dictated by our Chinese uh, brother who becomes a senior brother, and uh, senior brother always is, is a little bit tougher than, than, than equal brothers, so twins. So that will be felt. That's already felt in the Far East, very much so, on, on many instances and in, in, in many fields. But I would like to say that, uh, of course, as it was discussed today in the political uh, panel on, on, on Ukraine, the sooner we start uh, negotiating and s ceasefire, the better for everybody. And in, w in view of what Total said on the general need for the energy in the world, uh, I don't think that uh, the best solution would be further sanctions, super sanctions, super, super sanctions. Because you left uh, Novatech, Novatech immediately replaced you by Chinese. A technology which is for needs for the Arctic drilling, okay, not immediately from the best producers, but, you know, immediately, gray, gray zone and, and, and this uh, so-called parallel import technology arrives, uh, arrives to, to Moscow, uh, to Russia, excuse me. So uh, I will end up here. I, Russians, especially young Russians, academic Russians, intelligentsia, want to be with you in the same world process. And that was shown in, in the first part. And the second part will largely depend on geopolitics, much more difficult, because here the invisible uh, hand of the market works uh, less efficiently when the politicians get into that. The sooner we finish this tragedy, the better for everybody. Thank you very much. I hope that I e economize for some of the f speakers. Uh, thank you. Thank you for both for the presentation and uh, for the, uh, you, you are very precise. Please. Uh. Just one simple comment that 
the easiest way to get rid of all these problems is for Russia to leave Ukraine. That's Tell it to so, Mr. Putin, not of to course, me, okay? Of course, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, in fact, you referred to, to sanctions. Uh, to be frank, uh, the uh, Russian oil and gas revenues came back now to the levels before uh, February 2022. Yeah. So are the sanctions the Sanctions efficient? cost us overall, not, not energy, uh, about from 1% to 2% GDP nevertheless, and it is felt, no question about that. But to say that uh, it was a, 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 how should I say, successful uh, economic warfare, no.